things that I need today to uh, make this clutch bag are my 5x7 hoop, I've got some fabric scissors, masking tape, curved scissors, uh, I've got, I'm using silver for the fancy stitching, the purple for the main body and I'm using the white for the quilting and I've got some cutaway stabiliser. For my fabrics I've got my main fabric, fabric B, fabric C, now the sizes of these, for the main fabric it's 6x8, for fabric B it's 6x5, for fabric C it's 7x5, then I've got the lining which is a 6x8 and I'm not using batting or pellon, I'm actually using felt and that as well is cut to 6x8. So that's for the flat. Then for the front, now I'm adding an extra pocket onto this just to show you how easy it is to adapt these if you need them to be so. Um, so I've got two pieces of fabric. Um, I'm using that one and this one. Um, and they're both cut to eight by 12, folded in half and pressed. And I've got a piece of felt which is six by eight and that's going to be uh, sandwiched uh, in between just to add it a little bit of um, body to the the pocket then for the back i've got uh, my uh, outer fabric which is the six cut by uh, cut to six by eight the lining which is also 6x8 and a piece of felt 6x8 that's going to be sandwiched between the two just to give it some extra body. So that's all the fabrics. Now let's get on with making it. So I've loaded uh, the, the file for the flap into my machine. I've also put in some white thread as well and uh, white bobbin. I'm now going to hoop my cutaway stabiliser. And I'm going to put it in my machine to stitch the outline now. Okay, I now have my outline and on the left hand side there's actually two lines and I'm going to align my felt to the inside one. And it needs to go over the um, over the rest of the outline here. And then I'm going to put on top of that my main fabric and that needs to cover this outside line as well. So make sure that it's up the right way, facing upwards. And then I'm going to pop it back in my machine to stitch it down. Okay, so my felt and my fabric have now been stitched down. I've also got placement lines in here for when I add the other fabrics. The next step is to do the stippling in this part. If you don't want to do it, you can skip through this stage to the next one. Um, if you do, then um, make sure that you've got the colour that you want in your machine. I'm just going to pop this back in my machine now to do the stippling.
Okay, with the stippling finished, uh, it's time to add my first fabric on top of uh, this guideline here. So what I'm going to do is, with my fabric face down, um, I'm going to just overlap that guideline a little bit, like so. So that once it's stitched down, that will flip back, like so. So now I'm going to pop it in my machine to stitch it down. Okay, so it's stitched it down. So now I can fold this back and I'm just going to give it a really good crease with my finger there. And I'm going to add a little bit of tape just to hold it down while the machine stitches it in place. And the reason why I add it is because it's very easy for the machine foot to catch on things. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. Especially in areas like this, see where it can lift up. So I just add a little bit of tape. Much better than pins. I really don't like pins in my machine if I can help it at all. Okay, so now it's time to put it back into my machine to stitch. So it's now done the uh, stitch down of the fabric. Next, it's going to do the fancy stitching along this seam here. I've changed the color to silver in my machine. You change it to whatever you want. So I'm now going to put my hoop in to do the stitching. So the fancy stitching has been done. It's now time to add my third fabric and I'm going to uh, place it just over this guideline here face down. And once again I'm going to um, take it in place so it can't move. And pop it back in my machine. Okay, with that stitched down, I'm just going to remove the tape. And I'm going to trim this bit of fabric back just to there, just so it doesn't get in the way. Okay, so now you can see my uh, stitch down line. Next, I'm going to fold that back. Once again, I'm going to add some tape and I put it where the two fabrics meet and where one can lift and that's the area that's most likely to catch on your machine so I like to make sure that it's safely stuck down and finger press that well so that it stays flat and I'm going to pop it back in my machine. Next, it's going to do the quilting stitching. So if you want to change colors, now's the time to do it. I'm going to stick with the white for now. And um, it's also going to stitch down the edging as well. So I'm just going to pop this back in my machine. Okay, so my quilting stitching has now been done. Next, it's going to do colour 10. And I've put silver back in my machine to match what I did here. And it's going to stitch the fancy stitching 
along this uh, seam line. Now after that it will do the butterfly, the flowers and also the, uh, the monogram. I'm not doing the butterfly flowers or monogram so I will stitch, uh, I will stitch my um, decorative stitching over the seam and then I'm going to jump to colour 14. I've removed the tape and next I'm going to add my lining and I'm going to place it face down on the hoop making sure that all of the outline is covered like so and then I'm going to pop it back in my machine and I'm going to stitch it down with colour number 14. I have got a uh, Brother Innovus 750E um, and I want to skip through the next three colours to get to number 14. So what I'm going to do is, I'll show you, I pick the icon that's got the needle uh, with a plus or minus sign on it and I push that. Then at the top I've got some bobbins and it's got a plus or a minus on it. I'm going to push the plus on that and then I'm going to skip through until I get to number 14 just by pushing the, the bobbin with the plus on it. Okay, so that's the one that I want to stitch next. Okay, so the lining has now been stitched down. It's time to remove it from the hoop. And I'm going to cut back to within quarter of an inch all round the stitching on the outside. And I'm just going to cut along here just to remove all the excess fabric as well. But I'm leaving most of it on just so that I've got room to um, position it when I join it to the actual body of the bag. Okay, so now it's time to turn it inside out. I'm just pushing it up into the corners with my finger. Like so. And there I have the um, flap to my bag. I'm just going to press it so that it lays all nice and flat and I'll show you where you would have to add your strap if you're going to put a strap on once I've done that. 
Okay, so it's now pressed. If I was going to add a strap, I would now position my cord or whatever I was going to use like so, so that it just crosses the stitch line at the top. And the same the other side. like that and that would hold that until it was actually stitched in place. I'm not adding one to mine so I'm going to remove it before we carry on with the next part. I'm going to show you how to add an invisible cam snap to the flap of your bag. Uh, I've got my cam snap tool, I've got my cam snaps, now there's four parts to these. There's the male and the female and the two pointy pieces that actually hold them onto the fabric. So each piece has got one of the pointy bits. So I'm going to take my chalk pen. Now this, as soon as you get it wet, it, it disappears. So I don't actually have to worry about uh, marking my fabric. So I'm going to mark where I want the snap to be and I'm just going to eyeball it. I think about there's about fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the pointy piece through where I've put that mark. Let's see where is it? It's disappeared. <laughs> there it is. Now it's a bit fiddly but I would imagine it's a whole lot easier doing it without a camera under your nose. <laughs> okay, so I've pushed that piece through. Next, I'm going to marry it up with either the male or the female part. It really doesn't matter because one's going to go on the flat and the other one's going to go on the bag. So if I push that onto there, actually I'll put the, I'll put the male piece on. Oops. So push that on there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this back so that I can insert the tool inside the flap. Now the black piece goes to the bottom because that forms the clamp onto the, the cam snap. And what I have to do is wiggle it through until the pointy bit sits in the bottom and the other piece is flat like so and what's going to happen is as I squeeze the pointy piece will flatten and hold the other half of the snap like so so that's now firmly attached and you can't see it on the front I'm going to put this aside because I'll put that in after the other part in after I finish the bag okay now to get on with the uh, bag itself and I'm going to hoop my stabilizer once more and I'm also going to load the other file into my um, machine okay so I have my stabilizer again it's cut away and I'm just going to put that in there Trim it off. And I'm going to pop it into my machine to do the outline for the next part. Okay, we're now going to construct the pocket. I'm going to turn my hoop over so that it's face up and I've got my outline there. Now I said that I was using extra felt um, batting pelon. you can use whatever you want. I'm actually using felt and I'm going to add it now and I'm going to put it up to this line. I don't want it over, just up to. 
like so. Just turn it over and press it down. Doing it that way it doesn't uh, push the stabiliser out of the hoop and cause it to go saggy. Okay, next I'm going to add my back my lining fabric and this I'm going to put so that it just uh, I know that the, the grey there is actually sitting on the line so I'm just going to add that about half an inch half an inch over no more than that it doesn't need to uh, be more than that and then I'm just going to stick that down so that it doesn't move when I'm stitching it and a little bit in the middle now I've added a little bit of spray basting to my felt don't use anything that isn't intended for embroidery or quilting because you'll ruin your machine okay I've got my um, hoop right way up now and I'm going to add my flap and the flap is going to be added and you want to position it equally between the top and bottom line okay so and using the stitch line there as a guide I want it just this side of that line so that when it's stitched down it won't show so try and get it as central as I possibly can like that and then I'm going to tape it in place like that and another piece of this end like so then I'm going to add the outside of the back I'm going to place this fabric upside down and again about half inch over like so because that will fold out like that and be stitched down so I just want that sort of level with the other fabric really because if I take it up too far I won't have enough to catch here so that I'm just going to use this tape now to stick both of them down I'm not bothered about the stitching going through that tape because afterwards I'm going to remove it so it's not going to show at all same for the back that won't show either Where this is quite bulky, um, I want to make sure that it doesn't catch at this end in my machine. So that would be a bit of a disaster. Okay, I'm now going. I've got my purple uh, thread in my machine, ready to do all the stitching for this so that it doesn't show. So I'm going to get on and stitch that. Okay, so I've removed all the tape and now I'm going to flatten out the backing fabric. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape down the bottom there just to hold it nice and flat. I'm going to turn it over and do the same for the lining fabric. I'm just going to pop a little bit on each corner as well. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do the front but with the extra pocket in it. Now I've got my, uh, I've got two pieces of 
fabric. Um, both are six, no, sorry, eight by 12. And one is going to sit a little bit lower than the other one. Now this one would be uh, the fabric that's in your instructions. Um, so what I'm going to do is a great way to measure, <laughs> use masking tape. I'm going to put a bit of tape there and a piece this side, like so. I've got another piece here that's 8 by 12 and inside I've placed my felt and what I'm going to do is just align it to the masking tape and then use that to stick it in place there and there. So now I'm going to bring my hoop back and with this uh, flipped over so that I can align this to the top like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape in place so that it doesn't slide around when it's stitching. Like that. And I'm going to pop it back in my machine and it's going to do the final round of stitching. Okay, when it's stitched the last round, it does a, um, a single line of stitching and then it does the zigzag stitching. And what I forgot to say and what I forgot to do was to tell you after it's done the single line and just gone past the tape with on the single line of stitching to remove the tape because otherwise you're going to end up with it stuck in the zigzagging like I have. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's not going to be seen anyway, but a good tip <laughs> so you don't make the same mistake as me. Okay, next I'm going to remove this from my hoop. And remove the rest of the tape. then I'm going to trim it all up. Now you're going to have this piece of um, cutaway here. So what I'm going to have to do is put it in and cut as close as I can without cutting the actual fabric. It won't actually be seen, so you don't have to worry too much as long as you cut it close. Okay, that's that side done. I suppose you could use wash away if you wanted to, but 
it really doesn't show. Okay, so next I'm going to cut a little bit further along there. these scissors okay so I'm going to cut all the way around here now a bit taken care of obviously not to cut the actual stitch in itself but close to it Now I'm going to turn this inside out, natural fat is out the right way. Cut through all the layers there. <laughs> okay, right. Push hard into the corner. Remove the last of the tape from earlier and I'm going to give it a good pressing. I just like to roll my sleeves just so they all go nicely into position. Like that. And the, all that remains for me to do now is to add my final a piece of the, the cam snap so that will come down over there like so and I'm just going to mark on here exactly where it, I'm going to position it so I just want that to come about there I think my dot there. Okay, got my cam snap pieces. Now it's going to be the the pointy piece that's going to come through from the back there and I'm just going to make a hole for it just using my scissors just so it makes it easier to push it through because I've got couple of layers in here. You can use anything pointed. You just watch your fingers. Okay, so lay it down. I'm just pushing around the point like that so that it sits nice and fast in the fabric and I'm going to push that on top. There's no easy way to do this with the with the on camera. <laughs> okay so I seat it the bottom piece in the black cup and the top part over the top and then squeeze tight and that fastens my cam snap to the fabric. There we go. I think I can call that finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you join me again next time.